Who do they all wanna be? Me. Now who's at the top of the league? Me. Who got the number one seed? Me. Who got the run in the league? Me. What's good, party people? This is your man, Professor Nims, coming to you on behalf of the pundits of pugilism. Now, I know some of you have probably noticed, maybe not, uh, based on our subscribers, that I've been uh, gone for the last couple of weeks. I've actually been um, dealing with some kind of more academic affairs, uh, but I will be returning um, this following week. I won't be at this episode that you're seeing now, but I have been working behind the scenes to kind of bring you, to help bring you a more kind of inclusive and immersive experience. And part of that is having our own channel that's really dedicated to the pundits of pugilism. So give me one second, I'm gonna share my screen. And before we go into our content for the week, I want to encourage everybody to make sure that you subscribe to Boxing Pop Talk. Uh, as you can see now, there are no subscribers. This is a brand new page, but we have been working with um, creative artists to help um, build our logos and different banners. And it's really time to kind of get this show on the road. We're gonna be coming to you with some new and exciting content, but it's very important that we are able to kind of coalesce all these efforts and get it going to one channel. So we are asking you to please make sure that you do subscribe to Boxing Pop Talk. And with that said, without further ado, we'll get into our content for this week. I won't be on this episode, but I will check you next week. All right? Peace out. It's your man, Professor Nims, 3P. You know how it is. Yeah. And get ready for some more boxing to knowledge. The tour, so. Peace. Just waking up to this dope. The bottom good for y'all. What's up? What's going on, everyone? This is Ken, your boy Casual Ram with this week's uh, episode of Pop Talk. Once again, we're uh, joined by your man, Boston Jarrett and Coach Dave. Roof. All right, let's get started. This start this week we have is a pretty interesting week in boxing. Uh, not for fights, but just the, uh, the politics uh, behind the fights. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, also, we're talking about Lomachenko, thinking about coming back, you know, sneaking across the border and, and, and having this fight. Uh, a little update on, on last week's fight with, uh, with the female, Sandy Ryan and Erica Ferrios. Um, also, we have, uh, we'll talk about Klitschko's message to the United States and, and what he has to say about uh, Russian boxing. And, um, and, and finally, we'll end with uh, the coach's corner. Uh, this week, we'll talk Errol Spence versus uh, you guys. But first, we wanted to start uh, this week. Uh, Showtime dropped the summer schedule. And it had some pretty good fights on there and some pretty disappointing fights. Um, Let's go with Boston Jarrett, man. How how you feel about this this schedule that's uh being put out by Showtime? I don't have the schedule right in front of me, Vess, but but oh, the, the, don't. The, no, me, like me, I said, my laptop me. here is on the uh is on the is on its last legs here. But I know yeah, I, I know some of them. I know we got um we got um Fonduda Lubin is the first one that's coming up, right? That's coming up here in um a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. right. We got Tim Zhu Terrell Gachet. Yeah, I, I'm excited for that fight. Um, Gachet is a guy who can fight. Um, he's been in there. I mean, he's in what I believe is the toughest division still, even though it's starting to thin out a little bit. Um, one of the best, one of the better divisions in boxing, uh, one through 10, maybe one through 15. Um Terrell Gachet has been in there with, with, with Lada and he's been in there with Lubin and uh, lost competitive fights to both of those guys. I haven't seen much of Tim Zhu, but he's obviously, uh, you know, comes, you know, son of the uh, Hall of Fame uh, Costa Zhu uh, and have not seen much of this guy. So I'm looking forward to watching the uh, Gachet Tim Zhu fight. Um, I mean, he Lubin, definitely. He definitely with Tim Zhu, he definitely got the uh the assignment. He he recently put um put out a statement saying that look, he he wants to be great. And in order for to be great, he needs to come to the United States and start whooping some ass. So yeah. he, he yeah. got the he got the, the assignment. 
This is a good place to start, man. I mean, 154 is um is a tough road to hoe, man. That 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 division is uh it's it's like I said, it's it's tough fights one through ten, one through fifteen, maybe even. I mean, it's tough fights everywhere. There's no yeah. easy fights at, at, at 154. Uh yeah. You want me to go through each fight or you want to look nah, at we, each we, fight? Just, just to highlight the ones that you think uh uh catches your eye. Oh yeah, Lubin. We got Lubin Fondura too. That to me is a uh, is a setup fight for Lubin. They're trying to they're trying to knock Lubin off. Um, but I think Lubin's gonna shock people, and I think Lubin's gonna beat this kid. Mm. Uh, so but, so I, but, why, why but, do you think why do you think Pandora has what it takes to beat Lubin? Lubin was 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 uh, Hallmark as the up, next up and coming before. No, I said Lubin's Carlo. gonna beat Fondura. Yeah, I said I said Fondue was gonna win. I'm thinking that I'm thinking that height and that tenacity of that boy is gonna get get Lubin and gonna yeah, get it. But Fonduda, once once you put your you put your head in Fonduda's chest and he has no idea what to do. I mean, I watched him. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I I, I don't I don't know, man. I saw him. I can't remember which fight it was, man. But I thought he was. I saw him learning how to create that distance, and I learned. I and I found and I thought he was. Did a good job. God, I wish I could remember what it was. But but so the fight before whichever one I'm thinking about, man, I'm telling you, I think he's learning to create that distance. And I think he's learning how to throw a body shot as a big man and a tall man from a distance. I think that 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 long jab and those body shots, man, from a from a from a big man perspective at a distance, gonna surprise Lubin, man. Catch him off guard. He ain't because Lubin ain't gonna just be able to walk him and crowd and crowd him up in that thing, man. This boy's been developing, man. Okay. All right. We'll All see, right. man. De definitely looking forward to that though, man. That's that's gonna be a good fight. And uh obviously Spence Ulga is gonna be, I think that's gonna be a good fight. Uh regardless of who wins and how, I, I think it's gonna be uh it's, it should be it should be a good fight. Charlo Castaño, man, that's another. Oh, I mean, we, we talk about fight bar, after I think. week after week, and we haven't even looked at the undercards yet. I mean, it, I know you, you said we got um, you said we got um Ennis who recently yeah, find who, that, who signed that recently signed that multi fight deal with Showtime, and um, yeah, high stakes in that fight. He does well, and um. And he 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 takes care of business against uh Castillo Clayton. You might see Ennis in a big time fight in we, the late summer, early fall. We we gonna come back to come back to boots um after we talk this segment. We're gonna come back right, to we're gonna, I, we're I, gonna I, come I, back I, to I Charlo Castano too or no, we could we could talk Brian Castano now, but I want to talk boots and why why we why did Showtime start investing in him of all the fighters at 154, 146. I mean, out of everybody, they they seem to like just put their their spotlight on him and saying that they're going, he's going to carry the future for Showtime. The writing okay. is on the, the writing is on the wall. I mean, I mean, oh, well, well, we can't come back to that. So, so let's okay. let's keep let's talk this Brian yeah. uh, Costano uh, Jamal Charlo fight yeah. right now. I mean, uh, Charlo did an interview last week and and, and, and accused uh, Costano of possibly being dirty or possibly being overweight. Um, I, I got I got Charlo taking care of business this fight. I, I think at his second fight, see, he usually do his thing. So I, I don't know about it. that. I mean, you usually the second fight favors the more cerebral fighter, and to me, based on the fights that I've observed, it's more the, the more cerebral fighter is favored during the during the second fight. I don't know if Dave agrees with that, but um, I don't know, man. I think so, Castano. I think I think it's. I think Castano might so show some separation if he's healthy. If he's healthy, I think Castano separates and wins in this fight. I think he's the he's the he's the better boxer. Um, and I think, think having you said what you think he's a better boxer? Did I hear that right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think I think the Charlo brothers are all. Are all brawn and 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 minimal brain, man. They they're guys nah, that man, nah, you know, bro. You he can't yeah, he got three three of the four belts, man. You can't just yeah. Be I mean, but in in twenty twenty two, you you just telling you just giving uh uh Lubin's praises, but yeah, Lubin's Lubin, a, how how, how, how you gonna give Lubin his 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 roses? But then when it comes to the Charlo who knocked him out, 
Yeah, he caught him early in the fight. He caught him early. I mean, we've seen Charlo get outboxed before, and his his power and his chin and his engine is what always prevails. I mean, we watched Tony Harrison outbox him. We watched Julian Jackson's kid outbox him. I, I mean, I thought Trout and Vanez gave him a lot of problems in there, man. He He's not some master boxer man oh, he's no, a like, he, he never he never touted himself to be a master boxer man. Well, he's, not, boy, he's not he's not he's not even a high level boxer to me he's, that, a, he's a kid with a, a fighter yeah he's so a fighter you, right, he's, right, and fighters right, but, can be outboxed but but okay but, but what you but what you what you what you leaving out though going back to the whole holistic point of things you know what i'm saying what you going what you what you leaving out on is that out of all those things that you named in terms of people outboxing him I absolutely 100% agree. Let me let me let me be upfront with that. But what you're not giving this guy credit for is this number one, the dog in him, and then number two, the focus attacks that this man that the, that these boys do. And so I I I, I totally disagree with you, kind of taking away that that fight skill. And what I mean by fight skill, I mean the overall thing. The dude, uh, uh, who he locked, Lubin, and when he caught him early, man, you knock somebody out early when they're supposed to be really on that game and their mind is fresh. That means that there's some boxing acumen in, in you that says, I know how to get to this guy. And I'm trying to tell you, man, I just think you're not giving this boy enough credit for, I do what I do good, and I stay focused. Mike Tyson won't no great boxer. But he knew, let me do my peekaboo style defense. Let me come off this slip and turn these hooks and let me get to this body. So he stayed focused. So I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't just say and agree with because he's not a boxer. He's gonna really put it on this dude, man. He's gonna so put it on saw, it. You saw what happened with Mike though. Once he got in there with a guy who wasn't afraid of that power and stepped to him. Uh, Mike got Mike got done in. And I think that you're gonna see something similar with it. If Castagna was healthy. He's felt that power, and I don't think he's. I don't think he's too concerned. Um, yeah, he was hurt by Charlo in that man. fight. I, you nobody said, believes he will hurt. I mean, I think he just wasn't going to make that weight by the time it was time to step on that scale. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe could be same, right. Same, same with Virgil. Same with Virgil. There, there oh no, Virgil! Up. Virgil went to the hospital though, man. Virgil yeah, had he was to, trying um, to lose too much weight at at the one time. Nah, they said he was diagnosed with something very, very specific. It, it, yeah. Unless you're saying, man. That boy drained the weight disease. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we'll we'll come back. I know we got that hey, scheduled hey, for hey, later. Earl said it. He, Earl said it. He was like, he told he told B-Hop, you, just like you said, my eye was fake and I had to show the paperwork. Show the paperwork. Show the paperwork. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll see then. We'll see. All then. right, so let's move but, on to this David uh, Benavidez fight. Yeah, this this is this is now now we're starting to get into some uh this is this is low level here. This is not uh not what I was hoping for for Benavidez. Um and it, it looks as though I mean as far as the fight goes, it, it it is interesting in a few ways, but only to hardcore fans. I mean, Lemieux is a guy yeah, who the, was Lemieux is a known of, name, man. He he is a name that we know. He is a name that we know, but he, he hasn't been very active over the last few years. And the guys who we have fought have not been anywhere close to the caliber of fighter that Benavidez is. He's also been a guy that's fought at 160 for most of his career. And I don't know how many of these last fights have been at 160. Now, Lemieux is a puncher. And David Benavidez has been accused of squaring up, being very square. Yeah. At close yeah, range yeah. and being fighter. very and, and being very hittable. And I'm curious to see if he makes an adjustment in this fight and shows people some of that slickness, which I believe he does have in his repertoire. Or if he sits there and comes in there, you know, like the Terminator and, and tries to eat shots from Lemieux all night, because Lemieux can punch. Gennady Golovkin, who has a, a serious chin. Gave him all the respect in the world and say, you know what, that Mexican style, that's good sometimes. But against a puncher, he and, 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 and Gennady Golovkin chose to box David Lemieux. And, and, and Golovkin, to me, has one of the better chins in boxing. So I'm interested to see what approach Benavidez takes to this fight. I'm also interested to see how much he weighs fight night. Because if he's 200 pounds, then it, it makes the fight not interesting to me anymore. Who, who, I mean, who? 
A bit Doesn't of difference? Mean that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If he, yeah. If he comes I mean, in first night at 190 pounds. Your point. Uh, uh, Jamel Charlo said it last week. He was like, man, that dude can almost fight at heavyweight. Nah, he's massive. He's a mass. He's a massive dude. He, and he, he, he's a weight bully, and and I'm gonna bring that. I'm gonna bring that point up a little bit later. Um, so let's move on to uh uh Tank. And, nah, we can go ahead and skip this. Yeah, Damn, nobody wants to really see this fight, this. man. But Damn. Raleigh, Raleigh, trying to sell it, man. He's on. He's on the internet and everything. Uh, talking shit, but yeah, that's it, Dave, it, boy. I let I let I let Dave jump in hey, on look, that one. Hey. Man, okay, I see like this, man. Okay, yeah, all right, all right, yeah. Everybody got a punch's chance, man. But but look, man. Um, I mean, what 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 we even need to say about this thing, man? Uh, what's he got? Raleigh, Rolly, whatever how you say his name. Um, I like the heart that he puts behind that right hand, that brick hand that he throws. I I I, I absolutely like that. I think if it catches any man clean, it could do some damage or whatever. But real talk. I just think Tank a little too elusive for this guy, man, and just a little too strong, man. I think it's going to be a – I don't know how – if the guy stand there and try to bang and be – and you know how you know how Rowley can get – like he 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 really confident in that right hand. He like try to bang you. He going to sleep early. Yeah, That's my take. What you, what you think, Jerry? I don't think anything about this fight. Uh, you know he ain't even gonna watch it. So, so this uh Stephen Fulton Daniel Roman fight is pretty interesting. Um, uh, if you look at box rec and the rankings for uh, Dom, uh Daniel Roman, he's either one through four on all all four um uh, divisions. So, so this is this is setting up to be an interesting fight. Um, I, I think Stephen Fulton still take it, but it, this isn't a, a, a cakewalk. Is this a mandatory or is this a uh, voluntary? I have no idea. He he, I think Stephen Fulton w- is two belt unified now, right? Yep. He's it's yeah. probably if you if you check by if you go to the box, I'd actually never mind. I'm, I'm I bet you it's a mandatory. I'm excited for this fight. I I, I want to see more out of Stephen Fulton. The first I saw Stephen Fulton was that Omar Figueroa. Was it Brandon or Omar Figueroa? One of the Figueroa brothers. That fight that everybody said was um was supposed to be close or was a robbery or whatever that wasn't close at all. I thought, I thought that it was competitive, but it wasn't close. Um, Fulton is the, you know, first unit, one of the first, not first unified channel because we had Julian J rock was, um, Oh, he's the only Philly fighter that has a belt right now. Is that what it is with him? That's his, his own self-certified accolade. He's the only Philly fighter with a belt. Um, Stephen Fulton is the only active oh. Philly fighter with a belt. Uh, yeah, I'm all for it. I- I'm looking forward to watching more of Stephen Fulton. Yeah, see, he's he's number one with uh, WBO. He's three with the IBF, but then he's two with the WBC. So this 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 should be a good fight, man. Uh, of yeah, course, yeah, right yeah. So. yeah. So this this I guess they haven't updated their rankings here, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, this is a this is a mandatory, but yeah, definitely looking forward to uh, to that fight. All right, so let's let's go ahead and talk to this uh, the, the small Charlo. We're we not gonna let we're not gonna let Dave talk about Stephen Fulton. Oh, and, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was pretty good, man, on that one, man. I mean, I, I ain't like super duper solid on either one of the guys. To be honest with you, man, I, and not that I feel like, about it like you felt about Tank Rowley, but I'm just I'm, I'm I thought y'all were thorough with it. Yeah, I think I, I I'm excited. That's one of the fights I'm excited to watch, actually. But let's go up to the mall, Charlo, man. Go Ooh. ahead. Go ahead, Dave. I mean, go ahead, uh, uh, Jared. You should Ooh. speak Let your me tell you man. And this fight got announced. Um, the internet went – I mean, the internet is a ruthless, tough place, man. And let me tell yeah. you something. Box – the, the 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 boxing social media let Jamal Charlo have it last night, man. He was getting – so he was getting torn apart. And then this morning, all of his apologists were on their own shows trying to come up with all this nonsense for why. But look, look at this, looking at this fight objectively and reasonably, Mash Selecki is a is a solid, is a solid fight. Is a guy who's been in there with a lot of solid guys and a lot of high-level guys. Guy that went 12 rounds with Danny Jacobs. Guy that went 12 rounds with with uh, with Demetrius Andrade. A guy who's uh, beating Gabe Rosado. Um, I believe he was the first guy to knock out Hugo Centennial before did it before Charlo did it. 
Um, been in there with Jack Kolkai. Uh, he's been in there with solid, solid guys. Um, that being said, my issue with this fight is this. There were better options. There were better options Ooh. at 160. There were better options at 168. Ooh. Ooh. And if you were trying, I'm, I'm going to get to that. If you were trying to put yourself in a position to fight Canelo Alvarez, why not move up to 168 and get start getting acclimated to the weight instead of jumping right into If you were willing to jump up to 168 to fight Canelo Alvarez, you missed the fight. The fight didn't get made, whatever. Why not move up to 168 and get acclimated to the weight so that you're in a better position to fight Canelo Alvarez if that fight presents itself later? But we know the answer to that, right? If he moves up to 168, he's right there in the crosshairs of David Benavidez, and Jamal Charlo does not want any parts of Benavidez. Yeah, but he, I mean, at saying that, he didn't have to take Benavidez at 168. He could have took uh, 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 somebody in the top 10, like 9 through 8, right? Right. But if he puts himself up there at 168, that fight then becomes viable, right? Because oh. after he made every excuse that you could think of, including vaccinations, uh, he said he was too young to, he was too young, Benavides was too young to fight him, all this bullshit. He finally settled on one excuse, which was, I'm a 160 pounder, I'm not a 168 pounder. But if he moves up there, he's a 168 pounder now. You you and Benavidez is now the fight to make. But, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? I I I, I don't know. I guess you're gonna level me as an apologist. This guy, you know what I'm saying? He 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 was dangled, uh Canelo dangled him. I mean, he, I understand I don't Canelo, know if he dangled him, but man, come on, man. I understand Canelo doing it because he got more money. He made uh uh the zone pay more money for the for the for, for the Bibble fight and the triple G fight. He and nah, he got less, he got less money. No, I no, think. no, 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 no. Hold on. He got less than what PBC was offering, but he got right. more than what the original offer was. Uh, it, oh, I see, I see, I see. Because okay, so when he it was, was able when, to when they were fighting between PBC the and the zone, they, they were they kept going up. So I understand what I understand what uh Canelo um Canelo was doing, but he still was dangling Charlo. So Charlo wasn't gonna make a move because he had the potential of getting a, a Canelo fight, right? So that was that was at least two, three months. And then after that, the the uh wait, wait, wait. What, what was what was two, three months? The the possibility of the Charlo Canelo fight. How long did uh, that go? I, I don't know if it was two, three months, but go ahead. Finish it was a point. long time. So then All after right. that, and then after that, the Munguia fight came, was yeah. offered both fighters to, to Munguia's credit. After when I watched him on 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 uh, what did he he fight on the zone, right? Yep. Munguia's uh yes, he's a the zone. He's, so, a, he's so a, when he's I watched a, him on yeah, the zone, yeah. beat the shit out of uh uh Dave, Dave people, boy. Um, uh, I was like, this dude is not going to fight anybody. He's just going to take that 39 and 0 to go all the way to 50 and 0 before he fights somebody of any name recognition. But he took, he accepted the challenge to fight Charlo. It wasn't until, uh, uh, Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya threw in some shit that nobody ever heard of. If you, if you a promotion company, you bid on a fight. If you don't bid on a fight, you don't have no, you have no skin in the game to make the people who did bid on the fight say, oh, now you got to give me some money to help, to help promote this fight or to have this fight. That shit has never, don't, don't happen like that. But, but Oscar De La Hoya was like, hey, the zone, we, we helped push Munguia up, make him a name. So y'all going to have to give us some of that pay-per-view money because we made him a name, even though he's not the one with the belt. And he he's the B side, and he his organ the the uh, uh the zone didn't didn't sanction the fight, so I don't understand that. So that got blew up at the last minute after both fighters signed. So this yeah. is his third. This is his third. His, this is his plan C, and it, okay. became a, it became a shitty fight. But this is his plan C, and I don't see how that is Jamal's fault. It, it's 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 the business fault. But I I don't why is he that on why is he saying yes? to Demetrius Andrade's leftovers. Make, actually, make that Danny Jacobs and Demetrius Andrade's leftovers. 
because you won't fight Demetrius, right? Because of whatever bullshit reason. So you cool with fighting somebody he already beat? So so only only viable fight that I say that he should have took was probably Jacobs. Jacobs. Now nah, Jacobs just fought. Huh. So 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 okay, then that mean he wasn't man. I was listening to the boxing voice, and they were trying to have him fight old dude that Canelo's fighting at uh wanna fight at uh what one one eighty something? What's that African? Oh what? Oh Macabu? Macabu. He was like, no, he should fight Macabu. I was like, come on, man. This dude that what was about, 60. What about Lara? That's what I said. He, I said he Lara. Could have fought Lara. He could have yeah, fought Lara. I, I was I was on somebody's show today, this early this morning, and I brought up Lara. And is the guy that the host of the show, his whole computer froze. His brain stopped working, everything. He started stuttering and stammering, everything. Lara is a Lara's available. As far as I know. Lara would have been, but what's the risk benefit of that? So so now, like, so now as a common you, opponent. If, if you, at, you at Al Heyman level or something. You you know Canelo got this two fight this year. Yeah. Then the beginning of the next year, next May, he's going to have something open. What's going to be available? You know what I'm saying? So maybe maybe they trying to trying to keep Charlo safe until then. But like his brother even said it last week. Like, look, man, I, I, my brother's great, but he's going to have to do more. It's time yeah. for the law to start doing more. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a fan, this but this this ain't it, bro. This ain't Dave, it. You- Dave, you got something on this? Because I can go yeah. on and on. I, I mean, it ain't really, man. I, I I get where you guys coming from, man. But I'm telling you, man. I I I just think you know. Reason why I don't get all pressed and hot about it, man. I'll be honest with you. Um, we can't. Ex- it's just not the days of old when we came from, man. These guys are select. They picky. They 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 they, they choose and they trying to you know. And I understand it being about a payday. I understand it being a business too. But the reason things just don't really, really, really get me as as tense and stuff about it, man, is just because for whatever reason, man, nobody want to say they scared or they this or that. It is it is it is ducking is masked under the 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 the, the disguise of 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 business, if that makes sense. I get it. And so I I honestly just say, you know, I ain't gonna call, you know, Charlo or punk he ducking or or, or or this or that i just think that and i'm tired of it babe, you know that you know these fighters are strategically you know doing whatever needs to do to save up for that big fight instead of just going out there whooping it and making it making making you know making it so that you you the fights has to happen that it has to happen you know so bro i just can't Honestly, man, these Charlo boys, man, I just, I'm just waiting to see what's gonna happen and what's gonna shake out. Man. So what's even... funny? What's funny when you bring up like back in the day? So this week, uh, Jamal Charlo was uh, uh, was on Mike Tyson's uh, podcast show, uh, Hot Boxing. Okay. And, and and he Tyson was trying to make him. He was like, "Hey, man, y'all got to fight." And then so so Charlo was trying to. He he was dancing, bro. Y'all got to watch this shit. shit his hilarious. He was dancing Ooh, he like, oh, he man, he, huh? He said he had to fight who? Uh, uh, Benavidez. He was like, oh. the, he called him in a Mexican <laughs> monster. He was like, you got to fight him. And then so Charlo was like, look, man, you know what I'm saying? It's different nowadays. And then he's like, nah, man, you know how we did it? We start talking about their mother. We start calling them bitches. We, you know what I'm saying? We talk shit. And then they made you fight them. And then Charlo was like, man, if you talk about them, then they ain't going to want to fight. And then and he was like, oh, man, that, man. Tell dude, you, man. Hey, hey that, that, that's to my point, man. You get what I'm saying? That's 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 exact. I didn't see the interview, but that's exactly. I didn't either. Yeah, it's, it's just exactly pull up on YouTube, man. Point. Shout out to Mike Tyson, man. Hot boxing, man. That shit was hilarious. And, and, and the same time, it, it was like like it was uh Paul Pierce was the the other uh uh the other person on the show, and he was asking questions, and, and Ty- Tyson just took it over, man. He was get so so Charlo was getting punked on his own interview. So Tyson, too, Tyson was answering the questions like he was the one. He was the star getting interviewed. He was a special guest. I was like, damn. Hey. And then I told him to say something about it. He was, he was shut up and take it. He like, he like, yeah. Hey, yeah. Tyson yeah. Was we don't know man. what happens. Like, to Charlo, Charlo, these Charlo guys, they talk a lot. They talk real crazy on, on Twitter, Graham, and all that shit. But as soon as you six inches from them, they turn into model citizens. They church boys and shit. Not, 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 you, can't, you, can't, you can't lump men with mall, man. I, I, that's what, 
I, oh, I okay, fair enough. Fair enough. fair enough. Fair enough. I won't. You're right. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that because Mel Mel is to demonstrate that he's willing to fight everybody. You're right. I should not. Right. My, my last thing I'll say on that on this is, is this: this was not the the best fight that could have been made. He no. had options at 168. There's David Morrell who's out there too. There's David Morrell. Uh, at 168, who probably needs a fight? I don't see he's scheduled a fight. I don't see Morell on uh, on on this list. Um, yeah, I, and there was Laura. There was even maybe even um, maybe even Kyron Davis at um, at 160. You know, so, so I, I, that, that might have been a that might have been a dual safe fight. So this this fight that he's that he's that he's fighting now is safe. Davis might have been another safe fight to me. That. And that, and I think that's his mind. But it would have been, it, I think it would have been a better choice. But it's still, it's still ultimately safe. Yeah, <laughs> you, don't, you don't think you don't think a forty year old Laura would have been safe, huh? I I don't. I know the answer to that. I I, I know what I'm gonna say. But what do you think? I I, I got you, man. I, got I think you. he beat Laura, but but and, Laura yeah, I, still got a lot of. He still got a lot of. Uh, I still stuff. think he beats Laura, but you know what I'm saying. I, I mean, we get. I'm going. I'm going black. I need my fanboy right now. But all right, but so yeah. So my thing is like going off the interview and what he it came out of his mouth is like he want to be great and he want to have he want to lock down the belts, and then I'm like, so you at one sixty. But you 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 never called out the other besides Triple G, and you know Triple G was going to dodge you forever. You didn't you didn't you never called out Andrade. You know what I'm saying, Andrade. And, and you and so so to me, you're not being truthful. You're not being like, yo, you want to be the best and you want to lock down all the belts. Now you're looking at going up to 168 and only fighting one person for the money for the 10 million dollar payday that you're going to get. You're not fighting to be the best at the belts, man. So, because if you did, you'll clean out once. If you're going to stay at 160, say you're going to stay at 160. I firmly believe if uh, Jamel get to 160, he going to start trying to get all the belts at 160. Jamal, he just, he I don't know what he's doing right now, man. And then what, what, what pissed me off, Andrade going to move up to 168 because he ain't going to have any fights at 160. And he going to vac vacate this belt. And then Jamel going to try to chase Canelo and move up to 168. And then, so that's going to leave uh, Mangua, Mangua free reign to just fight some bullshit and become champion. So yeah, that's, what, they, that's dude, what they're man. hoping on. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's that's what I think happened with that Mangia fight. Honestly, man, just to that to I mean to go back to the Mangia fight real quick because you saw what happened as soon as it got leaked that he was in negotiation with Charlo, the WBO ordered John Beck to fight Danny Dignam. And as soon as the WBO announced that Danny Dignam, John Beck had been ordered, all of a sudden, coincidentally, the, the negotiations fall apart between Charlo and, um, and, and Munguia. So to me, it was always about avoiding John Beck, which would have been a very dangerous fight for him. I think John Beck would have beaten him. Um, I think John Beck would have beaten him pretty easily. I don't see. I don't know who who Mungia beats at, at, at the game game uh, crown at one sixty. Yeah, I don't. I don't have the rankings right here in front of me, but uh, but yeah, but look, but look, uh, you know, Selecki is um, he's a solid. He's a solid guy. Look, look, he's better than Charlo's last two opponents. I mean, who are Charlo's last two guys he fought? Uh, Montiel and who was the other guy he fought before that? Hmm. I can't and even remember who it was, um, but um, it might have been Derevianchenko, or was it? Um, I think it was Derevianchenko. Yeah, I, I would pick. I would pick Selecki to beat Derevianchenko. Uh so yeah, just just looking at it, trying trying to be as objective as I as I can here. I just can't see if you're a dude who's talked so greasy about Andrade and talk greasy about Jacobs. Now here you can go. You're gonna pick a or allow your matchmakers to pick a guy who both of those guys have already beaten. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's just, to me, it's not a good look anyway. Yeah, man. So this last fight, man, the Ray Vargas fight, Max Sale, I really don't have anything on them, man. I'm 
So if you yeah, fuck Ray Vargas, man. Ray Vargas ducked and dodged Gary Russell for all these years, man. They've been trying to he they've been trying to make that fight for a while now, and he he waited. <laughs> Gary Russell gets hurt, loses to Moxayo, and now Ray Vargas here jumps up. He's like, ooh, 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 pick me, pick me for the fucking uh, for the Ray for the for the Moxayo fight. And obviously, he gets it, you know. And again, let's go back to what Dave said, man. This is this is this this is um, boxing is more about these these networks and these promotional companies making money. And um, Philippines versus Mexico, that fight is probably going to be somewhere in California. Yeah. And that's probably going to be a fire yeah. atmosphere. Philippines yeah. versus Me- versus Mexico in California, that's probably going to be a fire. It's probably going to be some baddies. Probably going to be some baddies at that fight. Yeah. Hey, so so change the topic, man. But but keeping on with with networks and uh and promotions, uh let's let's go back and circle back around and let's talk about boots and, and why why you think Showtime uh invested heavily on 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 boots other versus uh everybody else. I, well, I got yeah, I got some on that one, man. I mean, I think the writing is on the wall, man. And not only not only that, um. I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I, I mean, the guy's going to, 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 to bring, you know, viewers. And I don't like to really talk about the, the money and the viewers and all that stuff. You know, that's more so Jared and you, Randy. But, but, but the, the guy is absolutely getting known. He's absolutely getting known because this man is screaming, begging, pleading. He is doing what Mike Tyson talked about, other than talking about people, mamas. This man is calling out everybody. He 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 just saying, I you know I I I won't fight. And I think the man is an, is 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 a is an attractor. I don't have his record or nothing in in front of me, but man, this boy is stopping jokers and he and he and he banging. And so I I think that that you know I'm sure there was some you know deal and all that stuff behind it, you know outside of the business side of stuff. The guy is. Absolutely growing tremendously in his fan base and getting known. He is not scared and calling out everybody. He's right in the middle of that of that uh, uh, where where he could fight some of the 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 the, the older guys that's, that's that's still up there. You know, that's kind of not out the door, but but kind of you know they they getting up there. And then he can also you know, be a great match for, let's say, some up-and-coming jokers. He's he just right there in the middle, man. So I think that Showtime, you know, economically and business, you know, business-wise, saw it. But at the end of the day, this boy, this boy is fight. Fan base is growing. He's calling out, folks, in, in a nutshell. So the, the one, the, there are a few things that were interesting um, about this deal. And I didn't read the specifics of the deal, but I was told that, Boots Ennis is still not properly affiliated with PBC, right? Yeah. He has a business relationship with Steven Espinosa in Showtime. He's still managed, uh, maybe promoted by, by Cameron Duncan. Um, but again, you know, by proxy, you know, Steven Espinosa does business with Al Heyman. Al Heyman yep. runs PBC. So he gets access to that inventory of fighters. Um, I, I am curious to see what they have in mind for Boots. Um, I think that the, the first fight that occurred to me was a, a Philly fight, a Philly fight with him and Danny Garcia, a pay-per-view fight. Uh, give Danny Garcia one last payday. I don't see Danny Garcia talked about going over to 154. I think that's a pipe dream. Uh, but I can see them putting together a Philly card, you know, Stephen Fulton defending two belts. And then the headliner would be, um, the headliner would be Ennis and Garcia, uh, you know, by, you know, a, 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 a premier fight in Philadelphia. Um, ooh, ooh, the, the, but, the, but, but uh, I don't think, I, I don't think I see a come back to 147, bro. He ain't never left 147. But he, he talking about 154. He's like after his last fight, he's been talking 154. I mean, he got a fight schedule for 154. That yeah, where, he ain't where, got where. a fight schedule. Period. At, at this point, he, he ain't got he ain't got nothing scheduled. And I don't think um, there's nothing at 154. I mean, 
There's nothing at 154 that's financially lucrative enough and safe enough for Danny Garcia. I mean, 154. I don't think his, po Jeff, I don't think his power carries over to 154. It didn't carry over to 147. Yeah, so I, I think he need. I think he needs to stay at 147, but I don't think his body going to keep him at 147. No, and and the boots fight is the biggest fight. Um, for him, I don't think anybody. I don't think there's much interest in a in a in a Thurman rematch. I don't think there's any interest in if Porter's gone. Um, the other interesting bit of news here that I will slide in, me being from Boston, Mass, is my man Rashidi Ellis was was given was given his freedom papers from Golden Boy, I believe, this week or last week. And Rashidi Ellis, also a 147 guy, is going to be looking for a home. And do not be surprised if Rashidi Ellis signs with PBC and you see a Rashidi Ellis, Jerron Ennis fight uh, sometime in the late summer, early fall. All right, that's cool. But, there, well, I, I mean, I'm but my I'm still, there for that. My, my, my question is still, why, why Boots? Like, we, you still have Boyd, Virgil Ortiz that, that's, that's, that's on the team also. He seems now, Ortiz is a, is a disowned fighter, though. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he fights yeah, on the yeah. zone. He is, okay. He fights, he fights on the zone. Um, and I don't think they have Virgil. I don't think they're gonna put him anywhere near. Uh, they're not gonna put him nowhere near. Um, Drawing out, he called Virgil been talking that smack. He been well, talking. Oh man, they ain't putting that kid nowhere near no drawing. And it's what you probably see from Virgil Ortiz if he's a hundred percent healthy and there's nothing nefarious here going on. What you will probably see is he gets. He gets another whatever fight uh, of the caliber he was going to fight, and you will probably see Virgil Ortiz, Mikey Garcia, uh, in the fall is what you'll probably yeah, see. Ah, yeah, that that's weak. That's weak. Well, you know, it's weak for us, but you know, Virgil Ortiz, Mikey Garcia in Texas is oh, in Texas, fucking, uh, in Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, oh. that's yeah. That 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 fight that fight does all the numbers in the world. You know. Um, Maybe even throw that on a Canelo undercard or something like that. That's big. That's big. That's that's a serious. That's almost co-main. Yeah. If you you throw Virgil and Mikey on whoever Canelo was gonna fight, if he gets by Bevel, you throw him on that undercard, and you know Jazone is now in the pay-per-view business. So, yeah. Uh, either way, long as the long, I saw that to say this. You oh, ain't gonna it, it might be. Yeah, it might be in the pay per view business. Well, I mean, planning wise, but that Bivol. No, fight I mean, is, they're, they're, no, Bivol Canelo was a pay per view fight. It, but that's not guaranteed to happen. It is. It is. I got it on pretty good authority. I told you that a month ago. Uh oh, yeah. Okay, we'll see. All right. So, so, so that's a good segue, man. We're gonna change over to uh, uh, Lomachenko and in, in, in this Ukraine crisis. Um, so, so where little bird has it saying that Lomachenko is trying to come back so he can make, you know what I'm saying, the Cambosis fight on June 5th, uh, even though he's in Ukraine fighting right now. I, I, I don't know how I feel about that because it's like two sides of the coin. Like, yo, you're doing a great thing. You fighting for your country, your homeland. You out there fighting, but then you be like, whoa, I'm about to go make this money. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go make this money and, and go fight over in Australia. So, I, man, let me take this time out and, and, and go make this fight while, while my countrymen is out here suffering. So I don't know how I feel about that. But at the same time, man, this is your passion. This has been your livelihood all your life. And, and, and the time is right for you to go get four belts. Do we have four belts? Can Basel got four belts? Or did, did WBC say that... Uh, 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 yeah. Haney no, is Devin, the rightful chain, champion. No, Devin Haney has the pride belt. Yeah, I'm still confused about that shit. So, 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 what, what, what do y'all feel about that, man? And, and do you think it happens, Dave? Man, yeah. So, all right. I, let me let me say how I think about it, man. Whether it happens or not, you know, I, I I'm honestly don't know, man. Just because of the whole political stuff that's going on, right? And the, and the points you made. So I I can't really speak speak to, to 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 that but in terms of him going back and trying to get that fight with with my man bosa if bosa willing to willing to to to, to, to uh to step in those waters man uh i personally would love to see it love to see it happen i would love to see it happen uh 
from the political side of stuff, man. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, the Ukrainian Red Reserve or whatever. I mean, my man, my man made a made a decision to go over there to fight to kind of yeah. help out. You know, that's that's his that's that's his call. I say if he can get back and he can fight and and, and want to go back to Ukraine and fight, then then so be it. You know, let him let him do it. If it's gonna happen, I don't know, man. I don't know the, the, the politics up over that Joker man, but I don't think uh, I don't think Cambosa. It's gonna be a good fight, but I I think Lomo gets it. That I will leave it at that. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah, like like you know from the from the PR side of things. Yeah, I, right. I don't I don't know what all. I mean, how that's gonna look. Um, for this guy, yeah, like you said, you know, Usyk, I don't know what's when Usyk is out there on the front lines or whatever, right. Dudevianchenko, Postal, if these guys are out there on the front lines getting shot at, or are they, I mean, you guys have both been in the military, right? There's a lot of different jobs to be doing in the military. Just just because he signed up don't mean he's out there with an with a AK, um, you know, blowing up Russian tanks and shit like that. This guy is uh, 120 pounds. He's got no military experience, right? They right. probably got his ass uh, processing papers or <laughs> got, him, got him serving food in the lunch line or handing out Band-Aids, you know. So it, it's, you know, but again, right, I get it. You know, it, it might not be a good look from a PR side. Uh, as far as from the boxing side of things, um, yeah, I've, you know, I've said on this show, uh, I, I would rather see Haney get the shot. Uh, right. I'd rather see Haney get the shot, um, but I would much rather see Loma get the shot than Ryan motherfucking Garcia. So if it's between Ryan Garcia and Loma, please make the Loma fight so that Loma, Loma gets the belts because Loma will actually fight dudes. We know that Loma, we know that Loma will fight dudes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'd much rather see Loma get shot. I, I mean, than if, if, even if you look, if you look through Cambosa's lens, you know what I'm saying? His eyes, like he wants, he only he don't care who. I mean, he says he don't care who he fight. He wants to put a show on for his home country. So why, if I was him, I would get Does the he? easy. Yes, he was like, man, I don't care. Whoever I fight, I'm a I'm a sell out, whatever Wembley Stadium, or no, not Wembley, but whatever's in Australia, he gonna sell that the fuck out. That's his main. That's his main thing. So he can he can put he can put anybody any name and he gonna sell it out. So I don't think he's gonna I don't think he's gonna pick Haney. I don't think he's gonna pick Lomachenko. I think I think he's gonna sign the two fight deal with the Billa. And get a, a tune-up fight against a bum, and then wait, 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 uh, what do you mean, Randy? He, he's already he's already represented by Luda Bella. I he mean, just doesn't, you mean he's he signed he, with like top with top rank or ESPN and get a two fight? What, he, with, is with he the, signed with Luda Bella? He's a Luda Bella fighter. Yeah. All right, that's, then that's he gonna sign a, he gonna sign a bum against top rank. Who wait, who is Ryan Garcia signed with? He's a DAZN Golden Boy. Uh, okay, so that that's that's a connection. So he gonna get a DAZN Golden Boy bum. And then gonna get uh Ryan Garcia uh late this year. I, I I put money on that. If anybody wanna bet me, hit me up. Because I I, I say it's, it's it's guaranteed two fights in Australia versus him fight taking one fight against Lomachenko, one fight against Devin Haney, and then losing his belts. Well, that that you know, and it goes back to his motives. You you said a few seconds ago that he he wants to put on a show. I think that he wants to milk this financially as much as he can and just picking anybody doesn't give him the opportunity to maximize his profit. Why not? He's when I, he's selling out the stadium in Australia. Right. But he gets more money to fight Garcia and Loma than he would just to fight some bum and then Garcia. He's not, he's not going to make as much money I, so, as he so, can. So I, I, it's, to me, is looking at either you're one and done and get make this your payday, or you slow roll this and fight bums, and then you can keep keep milking this out like Canelo. Hey, but I say this too, though, man. Um, we just don't know what what, I, and, and I'm not and I, listen. I'm not getting into whether or not he deserves it or not in terms of Ryan Garcia. So I'm not I'm not even getting all into that. I got it. You know, he's gonna make his choice, whoever makes his choice. 
But the thing that I want to make certain and clear of is that even Garcia, and I'm going back to what I used to say the last time we was talking about this division. I remember saying when we first started, you know, this thing that anybody in that division that gets matched up is going to be a good fight. I remember talking about Haney and, 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 and Lomo and Garcia. And we said anybody that get matched up. So we don't, I mean, be it whatever, mental issues or whatever went on, you know. So again, I'm not saying whether he deserves it or not, but I just don't want us dismissing that just because it's Ryan, that this going to be a cakewalk for this guy, man. Yeah, true. It's but not. I think, I think he gonna milk it for two fights versus the one, one, one and done. So, so with I mean, that, the tank, tank should be the 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 goal, right? Tank and PBC should that to me should be the goal. You sign two fights to fight with Tank, that's gonna get you the most money. To me, but they, yeah, that's gonna get you. That's gonna. Get that's gonna get you fucked up, also. Yes, that is gonna. That's, that's gonna. That's, that's gonna. That's gonna get him. That's gonna get him fucked up. But it's that's like pick, pick, pick your pick your poison. I mean, Lola he, is death by a thousand cuts. Uh, Tank at least makes it quick. I think, and you get a <laughs> lot more. You get a lot more money. You get prime time Vegas. You don't. You don't get the. You don't get the hometown fight. And Randy pointed that out. Is that Tank is not gonna go to Australia to fight this motherfucker? It don't make any sense for. Yeah, it don't make no sense. No. It don't make no sense for Tank. As as much as that might do for Tank's international cachet, I mean, Tank's in the fall out. Tank's probably never even been out the country before. Has he? Nah, I don't know. He probably never <laughs> been out. So yeah, it, 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 it sneakily, I mean, it might be something that's worth considering. It's just that Tank is such an established, and I, I don't want to get all into the weeds on this. He He's way more established here in a place like, uh, Atlanta or wherever. Um, on on whole on the whole East Coast, he's gonna sell out. His next that, fight is in, that. is in in uh is in Barclays. His next fight is at the Barclays. So, uh, so the whole alleged, East Coast. Allegedly, Coast. allegedly, allegedly, I I don't know if they're gonna be able to pull that off, but we'll we'll, we'll see. Allegedly. If he does great, if he does if he does great, good for him. Uh, but um, yeah, Camp Camp also to me, man, it's. It's yeah, it's just really a, a risk management game. Um, you know, you you're really not going to maximize your profit just fighting any old body. Um, but like Dave said, you know, he's not favored in any fight that he picks out out of the top guys. At best, he's maybe fifty fifty against uh, Haney. Maybe he's probably favored slightly over Ryan Garcia. Maybe. 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 And, Maybe. And Haney, I wouldn't even put him 50-50 with Haney unless it goes to the later rounds when, you know, Haney kind of mentally slips a little bit and get caught a lot in the later rounds, man. Well, yeah, it's because he gets tired from being on that bike off, 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 off fight to me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to me, and we had talked about that, Devin Haney stylistically is the most favorable fight because of how willing Devin Haney is to give up real estate. And that's, it's easy to rob a guy who is constantly on his bike, or it's easy to not for the judges to, yeah, we'll, we'll call it what it is to rob him. Yeah. Uh, and Haney, Haney brings a lot of his own money to the table, man. Props to him and his pops. They, they, you know, they're, 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 they're wealthy. They, they make a lot of money outside of boxing. Haney can bring his own money to the to the to the fight um he he's just um he's just not a fan that's not a very fan friendly way of fighting or at least that's the argument that the uh the Bella and Cambosis will probably make but uh yeah anyway yeah, so 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 moving on from that uh so coach Dave like you are a flag bearer for the the women's boxing division and um Last week we had a, a, a interesting fight against uh, uh, your girl Sandy Ryan and Erica right. Ferrio. So it didn't end well for your girl, but I think she was just a little too green uh, to be put in the prom time like she was. But uh, go ahead, give us your thoughts. So I, I was so yes, yes, I, I agree. I think it was maybe a little bit too too soon, um, but I, I I really would have to fault. Honestly, I had to fault her trainers in that corner because she still fought, you know, Farias 
you know, to a split decision. Uh, Ferris had way more, you know, experience, man. You know, two, what, two division champion, 20, 20, maybe 30 fights compared to this was uh, 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 Ryan's fourth fight. Yeah. Um, I thought, thought Sandy Ryan was a little, she wasn't tricky enough with her jab. She was just more so straightforward and plotting. She didn't put a lot of combinations together, you know, uh, um, when she did go to the to the body. And I think her corner, I think her corner just sold her or did her wrong, man, by 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 thinking that you could just get in there and muscle and bully somebody. Cause Sandy's a big woman and she normally just dominates and plows right through folks. It reminded me kind of almost of the same thing where, you know, even though Holyfield might not have been natural heavyweight, he was coming up. A lot of those fighters thought that they could just plow through Holyfield, but Holyfield was caught Beasel strong, man. Yeah. And that's, and, but this, and this girl, you know, this, this, this woman, Ferris was not only kind of strong, but she was savvy, man. She was savvy. And so the, the, I, it just makes me wonder how much film and fight plan did they truly have on this, this woman? Cause you know, she can box. You knew she can box. So to have your fighter just do nothing but but a, just a, a, a monster Drago jab uh, uh, and try, you know, it, it, and, and this woman was just moving. This woman was bunches of punches, not to have no fluidity in the combination. So so inexperienced, yes, but 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 real talk from a coach's angle, man, I blame that dang on corner. You going in with a with a two division champion that got you know 30 fights compared to your three, and you are not going to have a solid fight plan. You made a fight plan as if somebody was just going to be standing right there in front of you. You was, She was plotting. She was flat-footed. One, jab, I can't even remember if I even saw her double the jab up in, man. So, yes, inexperience, but I got to give it, I got to say, I was totally disappointed with the corner, man. That's my take on it, man. Uh, yeah. this, is, this was a prime example of um, cherry picking gone wrong. Uh, they thought that this girl was shot uh, or past her prime. She, yep. she's, she, she, I mean, she's got to be 37, 38 years old. Um, been in a lot of tough fights, and they thought that um, they thought that Sandy was just going to walk through her. And if they couldn't walk through her, they would get a favorable decision, which they almost did because they really tried to rob Farius. Uh, they really did. Um, the thing that shocked me was and not knowing a whole lot about sandy ryan i had seen the highlights when i pulled up her box rec i thought that there was an issue on box rec i thought oh they don't have her full they don't have her full uh fight resume maybe she had been fighting somewhere where the fights were recorded but no there was no mistake she only had three professional fights going into this fight and this girl farius has been in there with everybody. She was in there with McCaskill twice. Twice with McCaskill. Um, I believe once with Cecilia Brakus. And I think with Katie Taylor, she had fought Katie Taylor too, and she fought the German girl. Um, the the uh, Delphine Persoon is the other girl who she's, who she's fought, who was pretty good. I mean, this girl has got, Farias has all the experience in the world. And like Dave said, it, you know, it, it, it showed. I know Dave leaned towards coaching too, but um, yeah, yeah, just um, a little too much, a little bit too soon. Because uh, I don't think that that fight was as close as the judges made it out to be. I, I, I thought that Ferris was a clear winner, but uh, yeah. And I, right. and I will say too, just last, man, um, I, with that said, I still think that she is going to be, um, I think, one of the I think she I think she's going to be a problem for you know anybody uh, a lot of female fighters but I'm telling you to me again it's just that it's just that coaching man she got all the attributes she need man to to do some damage All right so with that we're going to change topic we're going to go back to the Ukraine uh uh issue and uh what uh the mayor uh Kiev says uh, about uh, Bibble. So, so Vladimir, former uh, heavyweight champ, Vladimir Klitschko says that Bibble shouldn't be allowed to fight uh, because of the war. And you know that all the sanctioning bodies try to sanction uh, the, the Russian fighters. Uh, 
it's it's funny that he's saying Bibble shouldn't fight because of the war, but he uh, he's going to allow Lomachenko to go ahead and slide out and possibly fight uh, 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 Cambosis. So it, it, that's funny to me. But but what is, what what is your take on on what Vladimir is saying? And do you think that it's fair to Bibble or or just fair to boxing to stop this try to stop this fight because of uh, what's going on in Ukraine? Now this this is all this is all bullshit, and this is uh, not to get overly political. It is a boxing show, but I think to me this is uh, this is uh, kind of captures the Ukrainian approach to this conflict that they're in. And it's really about information warfare and optics and trying to sway public opinion. I mean, Bevo being from Russia has what 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 does this have to do with Bevo fighting? Canelo. It's just got absolutely nothing to do with. I, I think they're, they're trying to say that, yo, if Bibble makes all these millions of dollars, his family is in Russia, he, that he's going to push all that millions uh, to his family. Uh, which yeah, is again, not, what is that? What uh, does that got to do with a decision that the leader of your country made? I, I, I don't want to get too much into the politics here. This is the boxing show. But uh, yeah, there's, 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 more, there's more nonsense. And, and, and it goes beyond Bebo Canelo, right? It, it, because there's another big time fight that was in the works and that was better be a Joe Smith Jr. Yep. And now, and, and now, and this is something that's not really been a headline story, but Bob Arum low key is trying to fight to get this Bebo Joe Smith fight. Uh, no, sorry, better be of Joe Smith fight sanction. That's a three belt unification fight and probably sets up an undisputed fight between the winner of Bevel and um, Canelo, or at least it, it can, depending on how better BF looks and how vulnerable better BF looks. Uh, so, yeah, the implications of this, um, you know, it, it goes beyond Bevel and Canelo, but it, it, this is that. This is foolishness. This is just, um, it's, it's nonsense. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. But to me, it just shows you how inner, intertwined the world is, how, how our sport of boxing, the sport that we love, uh, is being affected by uh, geo, the, the geopolitics of what's going on in Ukraine. So it, it's interesting. It's something that we definitely need to follow just so we can understand what, what, what fights we may have in the future and, what, and why we're not having it. Hey, no, absolutely. Ain't nothing new under the sun, man. Vietnam, Ali, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, 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 politics and war is going to, you know, somehow always have a, uh, uh, you know, try to have a hand on the sport that we love, man. But I'm kind of with Jared, Jared on the thing, man, you know. Yeah. So, so all right. We're, so we're going to switch from that. And then let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, Virgil Ortiz backing out of this fight uh, because of his medical condition. Now, now I'm under the the belief <laughs> that, that he 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 was he was a fat boy. Uh, he was uh, he, he was bigger he was bigger than the 147 pound division, and he was trying to do things to hurriedly drop this weight, and it didn't work. Uh, that but that caught that that brings up uh, other issues about you know what I'm saying the night before weighing and stuff like that. But I, I don't believe that it was a, a disease that's causing him not to fight. I, I honestly believe that it was just he's just a big boy, and the way he's trying to drop that weight was just unhealthy for him. What what say you? Well, I mean, what 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 I mean, what was it? Some type of muscle spasms or something? What was going on with him? So I'm about I can't to even pull it up right now. He was he I, I, I the, he was of, diagnosed with something very specific that the name yeah. of which I can't pronounce, but it's it's a, it's caused by physical exertion, overtraining, thing, things I like, like that. and trying to make that way, <laughs> but possibly it's, it's 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 possible. It's it's reasonable to speculate. It, it certainly is. Uh, I just as much as I throw. PD conspiracies out there all the time. I, I, you know, I'm occasionally trying to get these guys benefit of the doubt. Randy, you still there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. You don't see me? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, you there now? Yeah, yeah. I um, sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off, Dave. Go ahead. Now you good? Go ahead, brother. Nah, it's um, 
damn, the, and the articles were on boxing scene. I finally got my computer to work here. The articles were on boxing scene, but um, yeah, like it's totally reasonable to speculate. Um, I don't know that he's had issues cutting weight before. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to give Virgil the benefit of the doubt. I know Randy, for whatever reason, don't want to give Virgil the benefit of the doubt. Um, <laughs> But I'm gonna give Verge the benefit of the doubt, and let's let's let let's see if if this becomes a recurring theme in his career. Um, and before we start to uh, before we start to take shots, that's that's those are my thoughts on this. Your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give the boy the benefit of the All doubt right. here. Let me see something real quick. I'm trying to. Wait, look. It was probably about, I can't remember exactly when, man, but I think it might have been one or two times his cat might have been overweight or something like that. But Here I don't know go. how chronic. You see what I'm saying? Doc, doctor says I have rhabdomyliosis, which forced my withdrawal. That's on badlefthook.com here. And if we pull up, let's see, let's do a quick. Uh, Google search here. Control. There's a picture with Castano that's fighting at 154, hugging Virgil Ortiz. Oh, he's a little fluffy. And Ortiz is towering Castano. And it looks like he's two weight classes above. I can't find it, but it, here we go. Look, look at this. Look at this photo. Whoa. That's 154, Whoa. and that's 147. Whoa. So tell me, tell wow. me he had issues. He didn't Whoa. have issues fighting at 147. Whoa. He's a big kid. That's a big 147. He's a big I, kid. I, I just, I can't believe that he got a disease a week coming up to his fight. He just couldn't make weight, or he tried different ways to drop that weight and then it just fucked his body up so so you know what i'm saying the proof is in the pudding bro look at this shit this dude is 147 and this dude is 154 yeah so this symptom this um rhabdomyliosis a serious medical condition that can be fatal or result in permanent disability rhabdo for short occurs when damaged muscle tissue releases its proteins and electrolytes into the blood. These substances can damage the heart and kidneys and cause permanent disability, even death. Wow. So let's go to causes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so here we go. Um, overexertion, trauma, toxic substances, or disease. As muscle cells disintegrate, they release a protein called myoglobin into the blood. Yeah, I, Randy, you might be onto something, man. You might be onto something. This could have been this kid trying to cut weight. Now, I will give him props because he could have been using <laughs> he could have been using that stuff that um, could have been using that stuff that uh, your boy Oscar Valdez was using. He yeah. could have been. He could've been could have been using some pets. At least he tried to do this shit the old fashioned. Yeah, yeah. Way. I didn't say he was using. You know what I'm saying? He did. He did. He took any uh, illegal substance in. I just think that by him trying to cut weight to to make that 147, he did something wrong. And, and now, he, he, you think he you screwed. think that's why he went to Eddie Reynoso at first to see if he could get a little help cutting weight? Hey. Hey, Eddie, but, but a lot Eddie, of them remember, remember, Eddie. remember Eddie Reynoso after the Valdez scandal, he made all his cider spider sign waivers, right? Ooh, yep. And they might have been like, well, you know what? We may have, we may have to take, but you can't help us. You can't, you can't give us what Canelo be getting. You can't give us what um, you can't give us none of that what Oscar be taking. You yeah. can't give us none of that what Luis Neri be taking. Oh, all right, all right, Holmes. I yeah. see how it is. I, I just we'll think take that down the road there. You don't think Virgil that you don't think that conversation happened? Nah. I think Virgil just didn't plan this out well, man. And he just tried to have <laughs> had too much to drop too soon. And and this is what it is. So that's so why you back old school and just take some egg slats and then dump that stuff on that. Or all do right. the same day weigh-in. The same day weigh-in. I, I don't understand why we stuff. don't do that, but that's a whole different topic, bro. So, so yeah, let, let's it move is. on. 
let's move on, man. So the final topic of the night, man, we're gonna do this uh this um the coach's corner with Coach Dave. So last week we we talked Ugas in the Ugas Spence fight. So this week we're gonna go in the aspects of being uh Errol Spence uh coach and what we would be telling Errol Spence uh if we were the coach if Coach Dave was the coach of Errol Spence going into this fight. So take it, take it away, uh. Well, the first thing I would tell Earl Spence, man, after reviewing tons and tons of films on this guy, man, and, and, and developing that fight plan, I would just tell him, look, I know it, it looks very, very easy, man, but just don't get don't get get uh, cocky and uh, take uh, take calculated chances often. So in a nutshell, man, I mean, Earl, come forward, fighter, man. This guy cannot he cannot fight going backwards. He is not. Uh, very elusive and 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 moving fighter. He is flat footed. This guy leans his head over that front foot often. This guy has an incredible, incredible high guard. And when he is pressed, he is totally off his game. He loses the integrity and in his stance. This guy squares up and he covers for 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 protection. When he's on the hunt. He likes to throw that, that brick hand, and he still, again, leans that head forward. I would tell Earl, we need to be busy with this jab. We need to apply the pressure off the gate. And when I say apply that pressure, I mean we need to hunt with that jab. Work everything behind that strong white right jab you got. Try to come off of that right jab and, you know, and touch this man to the body. Shoot maybe one or two shots, even if it's a double jab up top or a one-two that's going to check his hands and keep that high guard off, then slide to the side, and let me see you pump maybe two, two body, body shots with that, uh, with that right hand. When you're on the inside, this guy, he does not bend at his knees. And this is what I'm telling you. He does not bend at his knees. This guy leans his head forward. I would say if you get on that inside, make sure you keep your hands up and create that space when you step back, just in case he's throwing some wild stuff. Look for that left uppercut, twisting that dag on on right hook up top. I see this guy getting stopped, and I see this guy getting stopped and hurt really, really, really bad, really, really bad. So it's a basic thing with Earl, and I sum it up: do not get overconfident because of what you saw in the film. Press this guy. Be tricky with your jab. Be strong with your jab. Keep him going backwards shoot some stuff up top to get him to raise those guards up and then attack that body. If he gets you in a clinch, if he gets you in a clinch, try to create some space and look for that left uppercut followed by that right hook and get this guy out. I think Earl can outbox this guy. A lot of people ain't going to agree, but I think Earl can totally outbox this guy. I'm not worried about his health or if he's healthy or whatever. I'm just giving you, you know, what I think uh, uh, you know, that I'm going to assume he's coming in, you know, okay, fine, and face healed up, eye healed up, and all that stuff, man. So that would be that would be it, man. Really, just those, uh, I think it was about four or five solid things, man. Yeah, it should be got... an easy fight. It should be an easy fight. And hear me, it should be an extremely easy fight for Earl Spence. All right. What you got, Jared? The, the, the... Uh, look, the only, the only thing I would add to what Dave had mentioned was, um, is uh, not accepting the clinch. I think that if you, if Ulga is put in a position where he's being forced back early and often in this fight, or Errol is denying him that space to work, I think you're going to see Ulga grabbing and holding a lot. That's unless Ulga is able to work effectively on the inside. And I have not seen a lot of that from Ulga throughout his career. Um, and I, I just don't see him out fighting Spence on the inside. Um, and I think you might see we got begin to grab and hold a lot. And one thing, um, that Dave mentioned towards the end of his breakdown, do not accept that clinch. Do not allow him, do not allow him to grab, do not allow him to stymie your work and do not allow him to deny you that space by closing that distance and trying to grab, keep that, maintain that distance so that you right. can work and get your, and get your punches off effectively. But ah, you ah. let this guy grab because he's a big, strong dude. He's a big, we just looked at Virgil Ortiz, who's a big welterweight. 
Ulga is also on the bigger side for welterweights. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I could see him making this an ugly fight if he gets um, if he if he if he gets down early. So so Ugas got a dominating jab. So how how would you tell Spence to like overcome that or or counter uh, uh, Ugas's like uh, jab? The, well, so Spence is Spence is a southpaw, right? Spence comes out automatically in a southpaw, so which doesn't automatically negate the jab. But it, it, it makes it, right, correct, Dave? It makes it a lot tougher for the orthodox fighter to get his jab off of that, um, get his jab around the lead hand of the southpaw, right? So, it, so yes, and, but, but actually it's kind of equally hard for both of them. But I think, I think how you're going to see Earl, uh, things. Earl, Earl, Earl's, Earl has more agility in his fight game than Ugas. So when you got a left-handed fighter and a, and a south, I mean, a, 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 an orthodox and a southpaw fighting each other, whichever fighter can work to that outside with that jab is going to be the fighter that's that, that's going to dominate that fight. You got to got to get that 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 lead foot on the outside of that that other opponent. And Earl is more agile and mobile than 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 Ugas. So I see I see him coming off of some fakes and moving to his right with that jab. And then, which is going to open up, I'm telling you, that right hand down, down, downstairs, man. So whoever gets that outside is going to be the winner. And I just see Earl getting that outside because he is he is much more mobile and agile than than Ugas. All right, so that's about it for us, man. Uh, once again, this was a wonderful episode of Pop Talk, man. Uh, we got your boy Boston Jared, we got Coach Dave. Thank you, man. We had a wonderful uh, chat, man. If y'all watching this, please like, share, uh, leave comments and so we can see how we're doing, how we can help improve our show. And uh, peace. We all will be seeing y'all next week. Peace. Peace.